Good morning, everyone. I'm Catherine Ross of the Street. I'm here at the NYSC with Jim Kramer. Jim, how are you? Catherine, I'm doing well. Uh, I had a feeling they could fade this rally. I did a piece in Real Money this morning that talked about, you know, that the main bets would have to be unwound, like a bet that uh, the Democrats would take both or that the Republicans would take both. Those bets had to be unwound, and those were put bets, basically. And once everybody unwound the puts, then you had the market come back to reality, which is earnings. And a Fed that could be intransigent, and a president who, uh, as Hank Paulson said, might be talking about an iron curtain, new iron curtain in China. So then, so in other words, what I'm saying is, hey, you go back to reality, and you start picking stocks again, and you try to figure out who's doing well and who's not. That's where we are. I was just talking to Jeff, and who's one of your analysts for Jeff Action Marks. Alerts Plus. Yes, Jeff Marks. We were talking about UNH and J&J, &J, and oh, I know that you you love by those. UNH under either scenario, and that's because uh, with the Republicans not having both houses, that's going to expand. That health insurance companies always do well. Uh, Humana had a great quarter, and United Health is going to 300. Jeff. It's going to 300. One of my absolute favorite stocks. It's been my favorite, one of my favorite stocks for about a decade. One of the reasons why is, is that they pulled out of the exchanges, so they don't have any weak, weak spots. Now, I, a lot of us wish, I don't know if you've ever had to try to buy health insurance in um, you know, millennials, let's say millennials here are 27, not covered by their parents anymore. Like you wish that so many, you wish that everybody wrote in states, but there are states where there's big pre-existing illnesses and these insurance companies don't write there. So they're very savvy. And the savviest of all, I'm not saying United Health just picks where they, you know, United Health only works where they can make money. And that's why I think the stock goes to 300. Centene's doing well too, but United Health is the way to play what happened last night. Looking forward to tomorrow, the Fed's releasing the minutes. There's not going to be a press conference. Oh, it's going to be horrible. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really? going to be hard. Oh, God, they're just going to, I mean, they're, they're overlooking entirely the, what I call the collapse in oil. They're overlooking entirely the collapse in housing. And they're focused entirely on employment and how bad it is that workers make more than 3% from last year. Now, where I'm from, having been at one point at led a wildcat strike and been very much involved in union activities, 3% is not that much. You would never go to your boss and say, man, we got to fight for a 3% uh, wage hike. But that's what, they're, you know, he's an old-time Republican. And uh, old-time Republicans worry about labor uh, and the price of labor going up because of a shortage of workers. Uh, uh, but, you know, when you listen to the conference calls, it's the tariffs that are raising prices, and that's the president. Uh, I had John Ferriol last night, who's the excellent CEO from Nucor, and they're a big winner. Now, I feel like uh, you don't really own a steel company going into the Fed tightening cycle, but um, if you had to, you'd own Nucor, and that's a winner in this scenario. But anything housing, it's, it's just going to suffer when those, I think, when those minutes come out. I don't think those minutes can do anything for the market other than send it lower. And that's a shame because today's a good day for the market because of all the, the bets that have to be unwound and the fact that we're focused on companies again. And the majority of companies last night reported good numbers. And the drug companies uh, are winners no matter what, as I've been saying. And the healthcare companies are uh, all in the UNHs. Uh, and uh, you can pretty much... Uh, 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 retail, amazingly, is a winner. Now, that's surprising to me because they get the retailers, for the most part, source in China. But everyone seems to have forgotten that. I want people to focus on that because at the end of the month, we have the G20. So you can let the retailers run, but don't forget to sell at a certain point. And by the way, I think you should sell 3M if you own it. That's part of a broader rally, and I don't want to... You guys already sold 3M. Yeah, I, I don't, want to, don't want people to own 3M. I had a couple of questions in my sure. inbox that had to do with GE. And, and how do people get to your inbox so we know? They get to my inbox either through my Twitter, which is at Catherine, R-O-O-S-S, -S, or they can... Are, how many O's? Two. Was that millennials? Millennials spelled with two O's? Catherine Ross, no. <laughs> that, that's a good connection, but no, Catherine Ross was already taken, so I had to do this. Yeah, how come you should have done adding three S's instead of two O's? Yeah, that was probably a smarter idea. Looking well, but back you're, okay, on you're Karen, you're Catherine Roos. Yeah, I'm Catherine Roos. Okay, all right. And they can also reach me at Catherine.Ross at the street .com. Ah, okay. Well, there's so many ways to reach you. So right, many so ways. Um, so one person had asked about GE and whether or not they should just dump the stock. No, you know, at this point, let there be a relief rally. Culp is very good at telling. Culp's very good. 
And if you haven't sold it yet, I think you might as well just hold on to it. Colt just bought $2.2 million. Well, that's one of the reasons why. I mean, look, now here's the problem with it. I'll just give you the other side. We own Dale DuPont, and we took it as a great uh, buy when uh, Ed Breen bought a lot of stock, and then the stock went back down. But then it came back, and it's not back to where Breen bought. But I think that, that you know, Colt is not buying $2 million in order to say, hey, look at me. He's saying, okay, it's a good investment. Now, nobody's ever bought. There's two people who have bought stock that are very exciting to me. One was when Steve Wynn bought Wynn stock in the 50s before it went to 180. And he said, look at me, I'm buying hundreds of thousands of shares. That was great. And then there was Jamie Dimon did a couple of buys, including the last one at 53, where he bought more than $20 million. Those are statement buys, and they have been, you're always looking for those. The JP Morgan buy and the Steve Wynn buy were, two, were probably the two best insider buys I've ever seen. I mean, I would hope that spending two twenty million dollars is a good buy. Jamie, you know, you know, Jamie did it. He did a yeah. great job. And by the way, with another one that, that could be a comeback is Newell. Newell got rid of Justin's, which is a business I don't like. That's the ring business and a fishing business. I happen to love the fish, but it's not that great a business. Watch Newell come back. There's a lot of different things going on. And I will talk about Disney in our own proprietary video for club members. Yeah. Also people need to know that you have a webinar coming up at 11 a.m. Yeah. today yeah. with Mark Chaikin. You gotta put it, Mark Chaikin is a fellow of his own. Uh, he and I have a great rapport, and if you want action, let's say you want to actually make some, do some trades today and do some investing longer term, uh, you should come to, tune into the webinar. It is gonna be entertaining. I will promise you this. It's gonna be the most entertaining thing that happens this week in stocks, maybe even this month. That's what we try to do. Uh, entertain, educate, teach, but also provide ideas, Catherine. And that's probably, you can switch that around, so that's the primary thing we're gonna do. I'm looking forward to it. So am I, I think it'll be really oh, interesting to see what you guys have to say about the outlook going into yeah, next year. the outlook and the election. And also, you know, obviously Mark does some, his money flow. We always talk about the chicken money flow. Uh, uh, Bob Lang often talks about it. Bob Lang is on the trifecta. We've got some really good products. Uh, it's a shame that we often just think about action alerts when we've got so much good stuff at the street, but our uh, alliance with Chaikin, I think, is really one of the best things we do. So today, 11 o'clock. And I got some sneak peeks at their uh, charts, and I gotta say they're really interesting. Well, I'm excited. Yeah, you helped me <laughs> very much behind the scenes. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see if the market's down by the time we do the, the uh, forecast at 11. Yeah, especially since happening. it opened up. Yeah. Um, so I also want to talk to you about cannabis, but yeah. I want that to wait for the Action Alerts Plus video because I really want to go in depth. I'm excited about this. I know you're excited about this. Love. <laughs> Love. So thank you so much for joining me, Jim. I'm looking forward to having more okay, of a Catherine conversation. Roos. <laughs> That's where you send your questions to Roos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, tune in tomorrow. I'm Catherine Ross of the Street. And don't forget the Chaikin webinar. Yeah, and definitely don't forget. And our follow-up video here, where we're going to talk about two ideas that I think might dazzle you. I'm excited yeah, about that. Yeah, All right, good. guys, check us out tomorrow and follow our coverage on the midterms if you haven't already on thestreet.com. Have a great day.